name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Welcome. Good morning. It's not raining. Well, at least it wasn't when I came. Is it raining now? No, not quite. That's good. We'll see if it is later. Uh, today, our theme is Blind Bartimaeus. It's a fascinating uh, miracle that Jesus did, and we'll be talking about this. He's a man that started beside the road and ended up on the road. And that's what we're going to be discussing. A very interesting, fascinating story. It will become clear, hopefully, from the sermon later. But we're going to begin with our hymn, which is number nine, When Morning Gilds the Skies. Hymn number nine. So we say the prayer together on page four of the Green Book. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to be seated for our reading? A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him when he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my mouth be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Would you like to stand for our second hymn, which is number 715, Lord for the Years, number 715. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.
So this is quite a story, isn't it? Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus is unique among the healings in Matthew, Mark, and Luke because it's a story with warmth and interest in the person who's actually been healed. And in fact, Bartimaeus is the only person healed in those Gospels whose name is given, that we know. Why is that? It must be something significant. Well, let's have a look at it. Because we find at the beginning of the story I mentioned earlier, Bartimaeus is beside the road, and at the end, he is on the road. And this is deeply significant. So what's happened? Well, the beggar, beggars then are a very common sight. They're marginalized. They're on the edge of society. Because most occupations back then require physical labor. So if you have a crippling disease or a disability, you're at a severe disadvantage. And you effectively are forced to beg. And blindness, in particular, is actually considered a curse from God for sin. Thank goodness Jesus did not think that and made it abundantly clear that was not the case, as we'll see. So Jesus is on the road and he's walking to Jerusalem, in fact, for the last time. Because, well, this is the end of his travelling ministry. He knows this earthly ministry is coming to an end. So he no longer keeps a lid on people's expectations, the messianic secret we sometimes talk about. Because he doesn't need to be secret. It's obvious. The Passion Week is arriving. He doesn't need to say, I am no longer Jesus. He doesn't need crowd control, if you like. So when Bartimaeus cries out, son of David, this time Jesus doesn't try and silence him. Because actually, for Bartimaeus, calling out son of David is risky. It's a brave, dangerous thing to do. Everybody listening would have known the verses from Isaiah which say the Messiah would be a descendant of King David and would preach the good news and bind up the brokenhearted and restore sight to the blind. Bartimaeus called Jesus the son of David because he recognized Jesus as the Messiah, the one who can bring wholeness and healing to all of us. Even though he was physically blind, he could see who Jesus was. And Bartimaeus, let's face it, was desperate. And his desperation is a doorway to faith. He shouts louder. He repeats, son of David, have mercy on me. And what happens is astonishing. Jesus stops. The original Greek means effectively Jesus stood still. How extraordinary that the son of God can allow the cries of a powerless person to stop him in his tracks. And Bartimaeus throws off his cloak, jumps to his feet, comes to Jesus, somewhat in contrast to the rich man who would not allow Jesus or not follow Jesus at all earlier in the chapter. Or in fact, the fear and hesitation of the disciples uh, last time as they followed Jesus up to Jerusalem. After initially telling him to be quiet, Jesus' followers are thinking, he is really annoying, but if Jesus wants to speak to him, Fair enough, let's go with that. And they say to Bartimaeus, a Greek word which effectively means, go for it. Go on then, you talk to him. So he goes up to Jesus, and Jesus asks him the question that he probably didn't expect, but we know, because we've heard it before. Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Not, oh, let's just do a, a quick uh, healing, blindness, right, zap, you're sorted, on we go. No, Jesus takes time. And he says that wonderful phrase, what do you want me to do for you? As he does if we ask him that question. It's the same question from last week that James and John, uh, basically he responded to James and John when he said it, but Bartimaeus responds rather differently from James and John. Whereas they're asking for extraordinary glory to sit next to Jesus in heaven, as we said, all Bartimaeus is asking for is ordinary health. Surely his need, of course, would be obvious to Jesus. He's blind and begging. And the most practical response would be for Jesus to heal him and be on his way. But for Jesus, Bartimaeus is not a problem just to be sorted out practically, instantly. What he is, is somebody who wants to follow and be with Jesus. Jesus isn't going to do something to him. He wants to do something with him. And he responds by asking that question, allowing him to express himself as a person rather than apologize for himself as a victim or a social problem. And Bartimaeus just says, Rabbi, I want to see. 
He doesn't ask for the wealth and the power and success that James and John did, just for sight. Not asking to be superhuman, just asking to be normal human. And Jesus just says, go, your faith has healed you. And that word for healed also means rescued. It means not just rescued physically, but rescued spiritually. It's a, it's a whole word. And that is exactly right for Bartimaeus. He received his sight, it tells us, and followed Jesus along the road. Jesus has transformed Bartimaeus from a beggar beside the road to the disciple on the road. And at the same time, Jesus is trying to deal with a different kind of blindness, a spiritual blindness among religious leaders and family members, even his closest followers, whose eyes are perfectly healthy, but who have not seen the bigger picture. So in his journey to Jerusalem, he's seeking to cure the spiritual blindness of his disciples. And it's an incredible contrast between their blindness and the sight-giving power that Jesus demonstrates with Bartimaeus. Like the disciples, Bartimaeus sees, but actually only in part to start with. And it's only in Jerusalem that the true importance of Jesus' mission actually becomes clear, where the cross and the resurrection provide redemption for all humanity, not just one person. And that is the point where Jesus provides us all with the clear road back to God, removing the blindness of our earthly lives and showing us the way to faith and wholeness. And I should tell you, this is effectively, there's, a, there's a, an echo for me personally in this. 15 years ago, uh, I was effectively beside the road, spiritually nowhere, not begging, but pretty much on the spiritual sidelines, with a vague idea that God was around somewhere, but not much more than that. And I did pray. I tried praying. God, if you're there, show me. Please show me. Now, that's, I look back and go, oh, that's a bit, of a, a bit of a sort of ultimatum to God. You shouldn't really do that. But actually, he did. And it felt to me like he stopped, took time, and asked me, what can I do for you? And my faith grew and my life changed. It was extraordinary. I was beside the road. Then I was on the road, like Bartimaeus. God gives you what you need when you ask him. And that's what I found. He will give each of us what we need when we ask him. The only problem, really, and I'll finish with this, is that we don't always know what it is that we need. We confuse what we want and what we need, a bit like children, not mentioning anyone in particular. It's like, I need this small toy, which is made of plastic and will fall away and get lost. No, you don't need it. They're not even listening. <laughs> but that's how they work. And we can, we can be the same, can't we? Wants and needs get confused. Does Bartimaeus need to see? Many blind people actually would argue he doesn't. Being blind is a way of life different from that of sighted people, but not necessarily worse, not, certainly not in religious terms. What is it that Bartimaeus needs from this encounter with Jesus? Well, in the last verse, Jesus tells him his faith has made him well. And Bartimaeus responds, follow Jesus. The need which Jesus sees in him is his need to be a faithful disciple a need that Bartimaeus doesn't believe he can ever fulfill and hasn't possibly even voiced for himself. And he is lucky enough to find out that what he needs coincides with what he wants. He's prepared to admit that his sight leads into what he needs. He is worthy and able to follow Jesus. His faith is up to the task. And there's no reason why he shouldn't as a blind person be a disciple, but he couldn't believe that. Jesus gives him charge of his own choices and he instantly chooses to follow. Such a crucial difference from his position beside the road before. And that's what Jesus does. He looks at us, calls us, <coughs> challenges us to recognize our true need deep within. And he asks each one of us, what do you really need? And he gives us the choice. Where would you rather be? Beside the road or on the road? Amen.
And so we stand and turn to page 16 to say the affirmation of faith at the top of page 16. And so we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated and we will have our intercessions. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, your kingdom is a kingdom of justice and mercy. We pray for the leaders of the nations, for change where power is exploited, for strength of will and vision where there is real effort to be generous and fair. We pray especially for all countries with inadequate supplies of vaccines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church leaders, Archbishops Justin Welby and Stephen Cottrell, and for Bishop Paul. We pray for all our parishioners as we get acclimatized to a post-pandemic world, and especially those seriously impacted by COVID. We pray for peace in uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, your kingdom is a kingdom of hope and joy. We pray for those who are not well in body, mind, or spirit, who are feeling sad, anxious, ill, forgotten, who feel on the edge of things, who are homeless or whose land is ravaged by fighting or disaster, who are poor, hungry, and in despair. We pray for all those known only to us, and also for Noel, Mary, Pauline, and Frida. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who have died recently, including Kath Wilson, and also those we have loved and see no more. Be gentle with us in our grief. Protect us from despair and give us grace to persevere and face the future with hope in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Martin, and all your saints, we commend ourselves to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake, sake of, of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. So shall we stand to share the peace which is on page eight? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sign of peace in a safe, safe way. Our next hymn is number 379. God has spoken. Number 379.
And so we join together in the Eucharistic prayer on page 9. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Would you like to sit down? As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
God of all grace, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And so we say together the prayer on page 13. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Right, may I invite Judith and Marie up? Oh, and yes, are we all? <laughs> Jolly good, do come up. Uh, coffee and cake. Sorry to keep on about it. Uh, we could do with a few more people to sign up to help serve so that people can have a bit of a break in between. Otherwise, it's a long morning for everybody. And if you know and can c bully, coax, or <laughs> bribe any able-bodied people to help us move the pews, it would be gratefully accepted. Please. Yesterday, John and I were at a concert. And sitting now, got chatting to the people next to us, and they said, they came to the market here at Stokesley, the farmer's market. We went into church, and they were so friendly, and we had the most lovely cakes. So we go every week now, every month. So that was lovely to see, perfectly. And they live in Whitby, would you believe? The other thing is, the first order from the Christmas cards is now available at the back. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you. Apart from the bullying bit. Right, me again, I'm afraid, but it's only three weeks to go. That's all we've got, all the time left between now and the church fair. Please, if you're able to help, and if you, even if you can only sign up for an hour or so on the day, we'd love it if you could put your name on the forms at the back, please. There are lots of, there are different stalls, and as Marie's just said for the lady, people doing coffee, we, we, they would like a break occasionally, so if, even if you've only got half an hour to spare, it would be much appreciated. Um, the other thing is, please, tombola prizes. If you've got anything for the tombola stall, that'd be fantastic. Also the raffle. I've been asked to, to say that we'd be very grateful for any donations to be received for the raffle as well. Um, I, don't, I think the other stalls seem to be... be coming along very nicely. It's just that we really, really would love some assistant, extra assistance on the day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, firstly, um, just to remind you, or, or to tell you those that aren't aware, on um, All, All Souls Day, which is Tuesday the 2nd of November, we're holding our memory service at 6 o'clock. And this is a time for you to come along and remember those you've loved but no longer see. And there's a chance, it's a lovely service, uh, a chance to remember those people that you've lost and a chance to light a candle for them at the front of church. I'm putting at the back, there's two notices. Uh, if you would like people's names to be read out that night who are particularly close to you, would you sign them onto this sheet? Uh, I think if it's people that have died and had a connection with church in the last year, they will automatically be read out. Uh, the other thing I wanted to introduce is um, our Christmas shoebox appeal. There's a lot of leaflets at the back. Um, it's, where, it's called Love in a Box. And you take a shoebox, it's like Blue Peter this, um, and you cover it with Christmas paper top and bottom. Um, and you fill it with gifts. On this form there, there is a leaflet here. You choose what age that's going to be, what age the child's going to be, what sex the child's going to be, or whether it's going to be an old age pensioner. 
and it can be sweets, it can be things, toiletries that they may need, it can be toys, it can be things to keep them warm. And these boxes are then going middle of November over to Eastern Europe, to orphanages, to people generally and people, well, children in distress across Europe. Uh, we did these last year, but obviously a lot of people weren't coming to church then, so it'll be a new thing to a few of you. Uh, it would be lovely if you could take a box or fill one at home, cover it, fill it, and bring it back into church. Probably, I've put the last date down as the 14th of November, uh, because they're actually going out, they have to be at the depot in the middle of that week. Uh, the information's at the back for you, but it'd be lovely if we can have a big collection this year and get a lot off. The advert went out last week and I had a lady from Boys knocked on my door and said they've, they've promised at least a dozen boxes. So if we're picking up round Stokesley as well, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, if you don't have shoe boxes at home, there will be some spare ones under the table at the back. You can just collect one, take it away and, and bring it back when it's full or if, if you want, I'll collect it from your house. Thank you. It's a wonderful cause. Thank you. I must buy some more shoes, so I've got a box. No, you can have a box from the back. <laughs> uh, we stand for our final song, which is number 507. We have a gospel to proclaim. Number 507. So we close our service with the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.